70 years of peace, open borders and prosperity. The EU is so omnipresent that we often take its advantages for granted. But what would our lives be if the European Union didn't exist? And despite Brexit, a few right-wing extremists in Germany are still dreaming of a Dexit. So let's take a look at some different scenarios. What if the EU wasn't such a strong community? What if every country had to face global challenges alone? And it quickly becomes clear the EU makes our lives more worth living. Anyone who sees the temporarily reintroduced border checks during the corona pandemic knows what conditions we would face without uniform travel and border rules. There would be long traffic jams at the borders and goods would be delivered late and the economy would be on hold and supermarket shelves would temporarily remain empty. And last but not least, personal exchanges between citizens in the EU would also suffer if border crossings were associated with great effort. Whether as a tourist, commuter or truck driver, as a EU citizen, we can all cross the common internal borders of the EU member states at any point without identity checks. And this means we benefit from the common travel and border rules in the EU. Fortunately, there are very strict criteria that apply to all member states for the reintroduction of internal border controls as was the case during the corona pandemic or now partly because of the refugee tra trafficking. And this also means that they can only be introduced in exceptional circumstances and only for a limited time. And all of this is set out in the Schengen Borders Code, which is binding across the EU. But what if the EU didn't have a common internal market? Germany here is a trading nation. More than half of exports go to EU countries and almost one in four jobs in Germany depends on exports. At the same time, Germany is a very sought after trading partner in the EU. For 16 of the 27 EU member states, Germany was the main destination for their goods exports in 2001. Without a single market, our companies would not have easy access to a market of nearly 450 million people. Instead, they would have to observe different rules for each member state and thus 27 different accesses. An immense amount of effort and a terrible vision for Germany as a business location. Without the four fundamental freedoms of the internal market, the free movement of goods, people, services and capital, we would have to pay tariffs and apply for visas. And of course, prices would rise, as would unemployment. But what if the EU did not act together to protect its trade interests? My home country, Germany, has a strong economy, but as a single country negotiating trade agreements with economic powers like the USA or China, yeah, that's different. Because our negotiating position would be much weaker than if all EU member states were together. With around 450 million consumers, the EU internal market is one of the largest common economic areas in the world and therefore a partner that no global economic power can ignore. And this also gives us the power to work towards a values-based trade policy that is to combine economic growth with social justice, human rights standards and the rule of law. And we can insist on standards for occupational safety, for environmental protection and health protection. And together with the EU member states, we all have a say in the global economy, but not as an individual state, as the British feel more and more after Brexit. But what if the EU didn't have a common currency? Around 350 million people worldwide use the euro every day, making it the second most used currency in the world. In 20 of the 27 member states, we can pay with the euro as the official currency, and this saves us high exchange fees and non-transparent prices when traveling through Europe. The German economy would also suffer greatly if every country had its own currency. Our heavily export-oriented economy would have to contend with exchange rates, fluctuations and everything, and it would have to incur significant costs for the transactions every year. And the result would be prices for the consumers would rise. And a strong Deutschmark wouldn't help there at that point. 
And the removal of trade barriers in the EU associated with the euro has led to a deepening of the internal market. For example, in 21, almost 40% of German exports went to countries in the eurozone. And this in turn creates jobs in Germany. With a common currency, this would no longer, or without the common currency, this would no longer be the case. But also, what if the EU didn't work together to ensure everyone's security? The cross-border cooperation of the security authorities also protects each of us here in Germany, because crime has long been organized internationally. The exchange of DNA and fingerprint data, as well as data from vehicle registers, increases the efficiency of EU-wide law enforcement. Europol, the European Police Office, coordinates the police work of the member states. Serious crime and terrorism can be combated better across Europe now. And since 2021, a European Public Prosecutor's Office has been prosecuting crimes that endanger our financial interests, that includes fraud, corruption and money laundering. And the EU is also arming itself against cyber attacks because it's, it's not just infrastructure and prosperity that need to be effectively protected against attacks from the Internet. And one country could not achieve all of this alone. And what if the EU were not actively committed to environmental and climate protection? Environmental problems do not stop at national borders. EU environmental standards protect the health and quality of life of people across Europe. Dirty water and phosphates in drinking water are hardly imaginable today. Without common rules, such as those we have, the successes would be much more difficult to achieve. And exhaust emissions in cities are also noticeably decreasing. In order to keep the air clean, the EU set maximum values for sulfur dioxide and lead in 2005. What still needs to be tackled is the abrasion of tires, fine dust that affects air quality. And in return, higher recycling rates reduce the burden on the environment. And millions of tons less plastic and metal waste are generated every year thanks to the EU. The EU is also pooling its strengths when it comes to climate protection. It sets common climate goals, ensures high climate protection standards in European industry, for example through limits for CO2 emissions in vehicles, and supports climate-friendly projects such as the expansion of the hydrogen industry. The Net Zero Industry Act is also important for this, as it regulates transformation techniques such as uh, solar and wind, um, battery production, heat pumps in the EU, and all of this. But it, also what if the EU could not guarantee common consumer protection? There would be no EU-wide warranty law when purchasing. This right assures customers that purchased goods must be repaired, replaced, or the price is reduced or refunded if an item is defective. Without common consumer protection, there would be no free guarantee of at least two years or even the 14-day right of withdrawal, regardless of whether you buy in the store or online. And there's also no EU uniform energy label in that case that provides easily recognizable information about the energy efficiency of an electronic device. It would be difficult to make purchasing decisions based on price and greenhouse gas emissions. The EU's eco-design law would also be missing, and this law requires the aspect of sustainability right from the creation of products. By 2030, an estimated 230 million tons of crude oil equivalent energy alone would not be saved across the EU without this. And many advantages would also be lost when traveling. If a flight or a train trip to another EU country is cancelled, the costs would not necessarily be reimbursed. Likewise, there would not necessarily be compensation if the trip was significantly delayed. The national driving license would also not be automatically recognized throughout Europe. And what if the EU did not work together to ensure the health of its citizens? In case of illness during a holiday in Europe, it's good that there is the European Health Insurance Card. In other European countries, urgent health care is provided under the same conditions and costs as those insured in the respective country. Anyone who is legally insured here in Germany does not need to apply for the European Health Insurance Card, for example. It's automatically printed on the back 
of our normal insurance card. Otherwise, healthcare usually works well at the national level. But the corona pandemic has shown that there are situations in which it's important to work together across national borders. For example, to jointly procure vaccines on the global market or to make safe travel within the EU possible with a common digital vaccination certificate. And for the future, a European area for health data is planned. And this is important given the enormous space of digitization. With common European rules, people in Europe should retain control over the health data and get better health care everywhere in the EU. And um, you will say, why is this not on your EU channel? Why is this here? Because this information is something that everyone could have looked up if they Googled it before the 2016 referendum and not afterwards, as we've seen the search in, in this Googling. I cannot imagine that this would have happened if everyone would have known these informations and then still voted for Brexit. And the same reason is why Alice Weidel's Dexit dreams are complete, utter nonsense. No one here in Germany with a sound mind would vote for Dexit. If you want to see another video, the next one is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.